Mr. Matt Paul, three minute history. Germany, 1929 to 1933. Social economics. The Wall Street crash was extremely significant in causing Hitler to come to power in 1933. Let me demonstrate why it was so significant. With the social economic situation being so dire, the electorate in Germany voted towards the extremes. Many people were unemployed and had lost their savings and they were angry. So they voted for the National Socialist German Workers' Party. And also, on the extreme left, they voted for the Communist Party. These extremist parties were now the second and third largest parties within the Reichstag. This is one of my favourite sources, and let me elaborate as to why. This shows how social economics clearly impacts on politics. As you can see here, here's a doll queue. Now, a doll queue would primarily be made up of disproportionately young men, okay? Young men are ripe for extremism. And look what we see here. Look what word we see here. Vote Hitler. So you can see there's a clear correlation between unemployment, social economics, and the rise of the Nazis. Many of these young unemployed men would have been attracted to the Nazis brown shirts, their paramilitary SA. They would have given them self-respect, discipline, and some an identity, something to fight for, okay? A greater Germany. So many of these unemployed young men went into the brown shirts. It would have been a natural kind of journey for them to do that. Also, Hitler had Joseph Goebbels, his propaganda maestro spin master by his side. Hitler was very good at propaganda, but with Goebbels, he was able to make himself look extremely modern. Let me elaborate as to how. Hitler would conduct electoral campaigns where he flied over Germany. They styled this as Hitler über Germany. Hitler über Deutschland, Hitler over Germany. They also used the radio and newspapers in truly modern ways to get to the electorate and get their vote. However, Whilst unemployment went to 6 million and Nazi votes rise, Hindenburg, President Hindenburg, wasn't a fan of Hitler. He didn't like him. Hindenburg was from the old aristocratic class and he thought that Hitler was very extreme and also he was a mere corporal in the army. He thought that Hitler was basically overambitious for his social class. So Hitler appointed von Papen as his chancellor, but he really had no popular support. He was also stabbed in the back by Schleicher, who was a... Great Machiavellian political opportunist, if there ever was one. Schleicher basically outmaneuvered von Papen and got himself appointed as Chancellor in December 1933. However, he had no popular support, didn't have the backing of the Nazis, and there was a rumour that he was going to start a military coup to seize power with the army behind him. This had no popular support, so von Papen convinced Hindenburg to appoint Hitler as Chancellor, thinking that he could control him as Vice-Chancellor. So with the Communist Party and the Social Democrats unwilling to work with each other and arrogant right-wing men thinking they could control Hitler, he was appointed Chancellor in January 1933.